Hello, and welcome to another spine-tingling tale of the supernatural. Today, I take you on a journey to the heart of the City of Lights, where the boundaries of reality blur in a gripping account of a mission that combines the mystical with the criminal. Brace yourselves for a story of enigma and intrigue that will challenge your beliefs and plunge you into the depths of the unknown. As always, I am the Ghost, a dark operative on the dark web, specializing in the mysterious and the outrageous. Join me now and the team as we embark on a mission that tests the limits of our expertise and takes us deep into the world of art, mysticism, and heist. Okay, so the request states, Urgent assistance needed. The Mystic Mirror Heist. Dear Ghost, I hope this message finds you well amidst your enigmatic adventures. My name is Veronica Davenport, an art historian with a penchant for the obscure and the esoteric. I'm reaching out to you with a matter of utmost urgency that resides at the intersection of the mystical and the criminal. In the heart of Paris, within the prestigious Louvre Museum, lies an artifact of unparalleled mystery, the mystic mirror. This antique mirror, said to possess otherworldly powers, has been a subject of fascination for centuries. It has been rumored to reveal glimpses of the supernatural realm and harbor hidden secrets. This mirror has been kept under tight security, away from prying eyes, for decades. However, just last week, it vanished from its fortified chamber without a trace. No alarms were triggered, no security measures breached, and no witnesses to the heist. It simply vanished into thin air. The authorities have been baffled, and the Louvre is in turmoil. That's where you and your team come in, ghost. I am familiar with your reputation as a solver of the supernatural and a master of covert operations. And I believe that only someone of your unique expertise can delve into this mystery and unravel the truth behind the mystic mirror's disappearance. I have attached more information regarding the mirror's history and the circumstances of its vanishing. Time is of the essence, as each moment it remains missing only deepens the mystery. If you are willing to undertake this endeavor, please let me know. I will provide you with every resource and access necessary to embark on this extraordinary investigation. The Mystic Mirror's secrets, its mystique, and its potential consequences hang in the balance. Will you accept this challenge and unlock the enigma of the Mystic Mirror? Thank you for considering my plea. I await your response with bated breath, hoping that you and your team will shine a light on this darkest of mysteries. Sincerely, Veronica Davenport. Okay, so with the wealth of information gleaned from the attachment, I gathered up the team to meet in the warehouse. I had the lights down a bit lower, and they already know that this means I'm calm and deep in thought. I took a moment to summarize what I had learned about this mystic mirror and the circumstances of its disappearance. I detailed out the mirror's rich history, its rumored supernatural powers, and the mysterious legends that had surrounded it for centuries. The circumstances of its vanishing from the Louvre Museum were equally baffling, with security reports offering no concrete leads. I made it clear that this mirror was more than just an artifact. It was a gateway to the supernatural, a source of fascination and perhaps obsession for those who had encountered it. The attachment had painted a vivid picture of the mirror's significance, but it had also deepened the mystery surrounding it. And all that said, Okay, our next step then was to meet the client, of course, Veronica Davenport in France. We needed to validate her claims and gather additional information about the heist and some shadowy organization that she mentions may have a potential connection here. We were about to embark on another extraordinary mission, one that would test our skills, our intellect, and our resourcefulness. And so we begin the preparations for a trip to France to uncover the truth behind the mirror's disappearance and prevent it from falling into the wrong hands, if it hasn't already. For this meet, I would go alone, and I made my way to France and then to the designated Parisian Café 
to meet with Veronica Davenport, the art historian deeply immersed in the realms of the obscure and esoteric. The quaint establishment exuded an old world charm. Vintage chandeliers, you know, casting this warm glow over everything. Veronica was sitting at a corner table. Her eyes were filled with anticipation as I approached. She was excited. As I settled into the seat across from her, I couldn't help but notice her elegance as well. I mean, this was a woman who had devoted her life to unraveling the mysteries of art and history, and her presence reflected that passion. We shook hands, and with a gracious smile, she acknowledged who she was, and then she started to explain how she had meticulously prepared for this meeting, and then she shared the details of the mystic mirror and its disappearance. This mirror was a centuries-old artifact. It's housed within the Louvre. It was the heart of our conversation, of course. This mirror was steeped in legend, believed to possess supernatural qualities, which some of I already knew. Rumors suggested that it could unveil glimpses of otherworldly realms and conceal hidden secrets. Now, despite its mystical reputation, the mirror had been safely housed within the Louvre, protected from prying eyes and hands for many years. However, it was just a week before that it had vanished without a trace. No alarms sounded, no signs of intrusion were evident, and no witnesses had come forward. It was as if the mirror had chosen to disappear of its own accord. As Veronica spoke, she revealed a small leather-bound notebook from her bag. Its pages were filled with sketches and notes about the mirror's intricate design and history. She went over all of that in much detail. It was clear that this artifact had captivated her as much as it had intrigued countless others throughout history. She leaned in, her hazel eyes earnest, and she emphasized the urgency of this situation. The museum was in turmoil, and the fear of the mirror's powers falling into the wrong hands weighed heavily on her and everyone, everyone who cherished its mystique and knew about it. I listened intently, absorbing every detail. The mystery of this mirror had already begun to weave its web around myself and the team, and I knew that our journey to unravel this mystery would be nothing short of extraordinary. With a final nod, I assured Veronica that I would do everything within my power to recover this mystic mirror and restore it to the Louvre. We leave the meeting, and I get back with my team at home and tell them everything that happened. I mean, I gave them the rundown, and then it was time to dig even deeper into this mystery, which they were already doing, of course. I mean, Harley was working on digging into the mirror's history, and Ryder was examining some of the markings on that mirror's frame. And Jagger and Scarlet, they were scouting out maps and blueprints of the museum itself. And then, of course, Frankie, he's looking into everything he can about the security and the incident. Veronica Davenport, our art historian, she had also provided us with more information about the mirror and its history with the museum and things like that. So I send what I can over to the team, who they're already working, but so that they can review all of that during their travels to meet me. Of which, by the way, we decided that all of them would come to France for this job. And now let me fast forward to after they get to France. So what we found in our research, combined with what we got from Veronica, we could see that this mirror could definitely be some kind of gateway, maybe to even the occult. In the course of our investigation, we discovered that the mystic mirror possessed abilities that could be harnessed for evil purposes. Things like divination. The mirror's mystical qualities allowed practitioners to scry into its depths, reveal glimpses of the future, or receive messages from otherworldly entities. Imagine an individual with the power to foresee events and manipulate outcomes, or communicate with beings beyond the mortal realm. This could be a tool that could promise control over destiny itself. How about a portal to other realms? Our research unveiled the mirror's potential as a gateway to parallel dimensions and supernatural realms. It provided access to ancient knowledge, esoteric entities, and hidden truths. With such a portal at one's disposal, a person could harness the wisdom from 
a very long time ago. Forge alliances with evil beings or command the forces of the unseen. And then there was, of course, truth revelation. Those who gazed into the mirror might be compelled to confront their own deepest fears or hidden truths. This also could be a form of manipulation. This unnerving aspect made it a powerful tool for coercion. Imagine an evil individual using the mirror to force others to reveal their own vulnerabilities or maybe secrets, maybe even darkest desires. It was a weapon of psychological manipulation or could be and a path of self-discovery, often leading to profound and unsettling transformations. I mean, things like this, guys, they can always be uh, seen as something good or used for good, but equally, they can be just as powerful and oftentimes more powerful when used for evil. I mean, we found out a lot of stuff. And, you know, there's a point in your research when you kind of come up for air. We dove into so much, and then we kind of just sat there absorbing the potentially chilling implications of this mirror's powers. This was a relic of immense power, capable of reshaping destinies, unlocking forbidden knowledge, and unveiling the darkest recesses of the human psyche. Not awesome. The realization of how these powers could be abused shifted us for a moment, creating this you know, feeling of unease that you sort of want to peel off of yourself. The shadowy organization, whatever that was, with their sinister motives, was on the verge of wielding this malevolent force. They had to be. Our resolve to thwart their plans, knowing all of this, only grew stronger. Okay, well, the team had packed a range of essential items for this job. You know, communication devices, surveillance equipment, forensic tools, all that jazz. While the team traveled, Veronica had arranged every detail of our stay for all of us to ensure our mission's success. I moved my luggage and items to our new destination in Paris, a carefully selected apartment, secure and inconspicuous for our base of operations. And I mean, Veronica had personally arranged all of this. It was located in a quiet neighborhood. This apartment provided us with both comfort and security. After we got ourselves pretty much all settled, it was time to go check out the museum itself. We needed to look at the space where the mirror is supposed to be, where it's being stored and saved safely. It definitely was a sacred space when we got there. I mean, it just oozed an aura of mystery. It had symbols and inscriptions all around it that hinted at the mirror's otherworldly significance. And we could tell, you know, some of them were repeated for effect because some of these symbols were on the mirror itself. And, you know, I've done other stories that have to do with mirrors, guys, at least one of them. You can go listen to that. But anytime I do jobs with mirrors, it seems like it adds another layer. Like literally, there's a whole other world going on inside of it. Something, you know, that you just feel that pull to, even if it's an evil trick, you don't know the difference. And I mean, that's the crazy thing about spooky mirrors. It's hard to know what you're seeing, if it's real or if it's just an illusion or if it's in a manipulation. Now, Scarlett, our resident expert on historical artifacts, she ends up making a remarkable discovery. With her keen eye, she identifies one of the ancient symbols etched into the mirror's frame, of which there were many, like I said, and in the space where it was housed. This symbol in particular, though, had deep ties to the occult, which we were kind of getting a feeling about. The occult. The stuff she was getting, though, was more representative of occult practices from a really long time ago. And, you know, even though it's from a long time ago, or that's at least what she was getting, it doesn't mean it's any less powerful today. We all were feeling it. And we also all kind of felt this pressure when we were in the mirror's space. And Harley was describing that to us as a type of ripple effect from the mirror's presence, because the mirror itself has a lot of influence on the psyche. And so that kind of thing would and could be left behind, that kind of energy. We looked at the surroundings, you know, the the area around the museum. Were there any hints there? Uh, And it was pretty interesting too. We set up some of our equipment inside and it helped us gain some perspective on this area uh, as being some type of bridge between the physical 
and spiritual realms. So although we didn't get any more clues on how someone would get this thing out of here, we definitely got a lot of uh, information and clues to the energy that was there and the occult energy. And so with that being around all of us, we kind of got away from any trying to solve any, you know, physical, how did they get in and get this mirror? It doesn't matter anymore. They could have used a lot of things and a lot of ways to get the mirror. So we're going to forget about that for now and just concentrate on the mirror itself. But okay, as our investigation, you know, got deeper, we stumbled on more information, a chilling revelation really, about this shadowy organization that Veronica had hinted to us about. This, the realizations we were having exhibited a disturbing fascination for mystical artifacts. One group in particular we were looking at and their notoriety extended across you know, the hidden corners of the occult world with whispers of their connections and their insatiable thirst for powerful relics. We were very sure that this would be the organization we were looking for. This group seemed to only work in the background. A chilling pattern even emerged as we connected them to a series of baffling cases involving the mysterious disappearances of priceless artifacts. In their wake, these artifacts left behind unexplained events and supernatural occurrences, casting an eerie aura around the organization's operations. The artifacts they coveted were far from ordinary. They possessed unique and mystic qualities, from ancient amulets with rumored protective powers to esoteric manuscripts promising arcane knowledge. I mean, nothing was beyond their grasp. The artifacts' vanishing acts were always clean and mysterious with pretty much no clues, leaving behind puzzled curators, perplexed historians, and eerie legends because of course those have to happen. We knew at this point that whoever took this was obviously someone or maybe a group of someones that knew exactly what they were doing, like this group, and had done this before. This made our newfound mysterious organization even more of a fit. They never acted in public, and even if there was somewhat of a hint to their actions, everything was concealed in layers of intrigue. The chilling pattern we uncovered led us to a series of baffling cases involving the mysterious disappearance of these artifacts. So let me give you a couple of examples just so you know what I'm talking about. So one was the obsidian chalice. So this is housed in a secluded museum in Cairo. This chalice was an ancient vessel with reputed ties to mystical ceremonies of an ancient civilization. This chalice was known to emit an eerie glow or light when exposed to the light of a full moon. Its disappearance coincided with a series of inexplicable lunar phenomena in the region, leading to rumors that it had fallen into the hands of this shadowy organization. And for this story, I think I'm just going to call this shadowy organization the Collectors, just so we all know what I'm talking about. I can't really give you the full name of who they really are, so we'll just refer to them as the Collectors here. Okay, and then another one would be the Codex of Shadows. Now, this is an ancient manuscript rumored to contain incantations capable of unlocking the secrets of the spirit world. Now, it had been safeguarded within the archives of a remote monastery in the Himalayas for centuries. Its vanishing act was accompanied by reports of strange apparitions and ghostly whispers echoing through the monastery's halls. The local monks, they were left bewildered and haunted by the manuscript's sudden disappearance. And, I mean, it's not like you can just put this stuff back and it's all okay. Because this organization, the collectors, they doesn't just keep it all. If we're right, they're spreading these items out across the world to expand their work and members, if you will. So, even if they get something and they're taking these items... We're not thinking that we're going to get to one place and just find them all and return it all and it's fine. First of all, our job is to find the mirror. But what we're learning is these guys have been busy. So that's all we know so far. You know, things like this that we see in museums and all of that, you know, it's great for tourism and culture. But there's a lot that many of these items, you know, too many of these items that are housed in this way around the world. There's a lot to them. Take the cursed sector of Cairo. 
Now, used in the wrong way, this could be used to manipulate the thoughts and actions of others, making people obedient, right? It can be used to induce mass hysteria or widespread panic even, which could serve as a great tool if you want chaos and disruption. I mean, these things, you know, that seem very cool and old to us when we visit them, they actually did have a purpose at one point. We can't forget this. And sure, you know, we love to read up on museums and read all the history of what's in them and all of that, but you're never going to get the full story or the true story about something's true powers. First of all, how can we for sure know them all? And nobody wants to scare you from coming to a museum, right? And I mean, let's face it, in our culture today, for one, it's not cool to talk about that stuff because you might seem crazy. Unfortunately, because we as a people cannot handle information that can be taken in different ways or used in different ways, these things can't always be shared with the masses. And that's just unfortunate. But that's the world we created, isn't it? Okay, well, back to this. There are a lot of things that we could only assume the collectors have taken. Things like scepters or the serpent's eye medallion. Each one of these artifacts could potentially amplify the abilities of those that hold them, like this organization. It could grant someone supernatural advantages in their quest for power and control, which we know it seems everybody wants. Were these things always used in a malicious way? Well, most likely not, but certainly some were, and they certainly can be used in that way today. We have learned a lot about redirecting energy, and those tactics can be used on any number of items originally intended for good, and we need to remember that. Okay, well now, also in our research, we discovered that pattern. Okay, it was a chilling pattern of artifact thefts and different mysterious occurrences that were all linked in some way we were finding to these collectors. They definitely had a fascination for the mysterious relics and definitely had sinister motivations around anything mystical. This is what we were learning. I mean, we weren't going to be able to prove every heist right then and there, but it certainly was becoming very clear to us anyway that these guys had been involved in quite a bit. They had been very busy building something behind the scenes. And this mystic mirror, with its many rumored properties and powers, this could be one of their most ultimate prizes, a key player in their collection for whatever it is they're doing. Whether this group intended to harness the mirror's power for their own sinister purposes, or maybe unlock its secrets for an even bigger and darker agenda, we didn't know. But what we did know is that we had to get in and expose whatever it was that they had going and stop it. But before we could confront the collectors, we needed to find their hidden lair to gather intelligence about their activities. Our initial research had provided us with some leads, but we still had to pinpoint the exact location. Our relentless pursuit of this shadowy organization, the collectors, led us to a clandestine gathering known as Nocturne Enematique, a grand masquerade ball, if you can believe this, that was held at the prestigious Hotel de Crasset in the heart of Paris. It was an opulent affair, drawing Paris's elite and those with a taste for the mysterious. The air was thick with anticipation and intrigue, as Scarlet, Harley, and I, yes, all three of us, we all dressed in lavish masquerade attire, and we made our way over to this event. Of course, we would get ourselves in. We do have connections in France. We got ourselves all set up so that we could get in and then blend in. Scarlet wore this stunning midnight blue gown with intricate lace and her mask. It was an elegant design. It had these sapphire accents. Harley was in this stylish black tuxedo and a mask that resembled a raven, really, with its black feathers. This is just, you know, Harley at her best, her way of adding a little bit of drama to the occasion. You know, she's kind of a quiet jokester, and this is just what she does. Now, as for me, I, of course, opted for a simple, I had a deep crimson gown, and it had a matching mask, and I had little silver accents. So that's how we were when we entered this ball. We were looking pretty fine. 
The dimly lit ballroom was a sea of masks and gowns, concealing the identities of everyone, including us, so we blended in seamlessly to the crowd. Our disguises masked our true purpose, along with our true identities. Beneath the veneer of celebration, we sensed an undercurrent of secrecy, a tantalizing hint that we were on the right track. We moved about, flowing with everyone else. Our senses were heightened, tuned into every detail, every word, every gesture, conversations on the edge of mysticism and the unknown. And we listened attentively, looking for any hint of the collector's presence. And as the night wore on, we encountered individuals who operated on the fringes of society, each with their own connections and secrets in this whole area of all these mystical artifacts and things, occult secrets, types of magic. I mean, some of these people were art collectors with a taste for the unusual, while others, you know, there were other people there actually interested, academics delving into the realms of the esoteric. Each interaction, though, brought us closer to unraveling this mystery and questions that surrounded the collectors. Who were their people? Well, we were finding out. This event provided us with a crucial glimpse into the collector's world. Yet, as the masquerade ball came to an end, we knew that the mission wasn't over yet, not that night. The confrontation with the collectors was still out in front of us. Now, after this event was all done and closed up. We stuck around. We maintained a discreet distance from the guests who piqued our interest. And our pursuit of the shadowy organization had brought us closer to their inner circle. And so we couldn't afford to lose the trail. Not then. Under the cover of night, we shadowed their movements, these people we had pegged, through the winding streets of Paris. Scarlett, Harley, and I moved with the precision of well-trained operatives We, of course, had changed by then into our night operative gear, so we blended into the city. As we followed these guys, though, they led us to this mansion. It was kind of hidden, nestled back in a quiet, upscale neighborhood on the outskirts of Paris. This mansion, I have to say, was an imposing structure. Its darkened windows revealed nothing of the secrets that were inside, because you just knew there were many. We remained vigilant observing the comings and goings of those who entered and left the building. These people now revealed as members of the collectors, they were coming and going in secrecy. Our surveillance uncovered that the mansion served as the organization's lair, just what we were looking for. Before attempting to infiltrate, though, and confront these cultists, we knew that gathering more information about their operations was essential. Our primary goal was to understand what they were doing with these artifacts they acquired and whether the mansion served as, you know, a temporary or permanent storage facility. What were we dealing with here? So before we get too antsy, we had more work to do. Days turned into nights. I mean, our efforts to uncover the organization's secrets intensified. We needed a clearer picture of their operations. And it paid off. Our surveillance and the information gathering efforts yielded crucial insights to the collector's activities. Things like, you know, artifact rotation. Okay, it became apparent that the collectors did indeed use the mansion as a temporary holding facility for the mystical artifacts they acquired. Our observations revealed that they rotated these artifacts periodically, suggesting that they were either using them for some occult purposes or simply moving them to different locations for some other reason. Mystical rituals. We witnessed, from our concealed vantage points, the collectors conducting mystical rituals within the mansion. We also observed the gathering of cultists. We observed and discovered hidden chambers. I mean, we noticed suspicious activity in certain parts of the mansion, suggesting the presence of concealed chambers or storage areas And we were right. And then there was the actual transport of artifacts. On occasion, we would observe the transport of artifacts to and from the mansion. And this confirmed our suspicions that the organization was using the mansion as a hub for their operations. And they were spreading things out. And why this is bad is because what are they doing with everything? To us, this means they are making more and creating more home bases around the world collecting more cultists. 
Now, with this newfound knowledge, we were better prepared to plan our infiltration of this mansion and get that mirror. However, the mysteries surrounding the organization's motives and the true nature of the artifacts they collected, we still didn't know. The answers we sought now lay within the heart of the mansion, and our next move is going to take us closer to unraveling whatever they have going on here. It was becoming increasingly clear that the artifacts they sought were not just curiosities, like something for a collector. They were doing something with them. And to our understanding, it was in the world of the occult. They were using these artifacts like dark instruments, orchestrating events and agendas to their advantage. In pursuit of unraveling the collector's hierarchy, our team had to act with precision and subtlety. We had to be careful. We already had a lot of information about the artifacts and their intentions, but now identifying the key figures doing all of this, we had to solve that. So gathering at our Parisian base, we knew that understanding the structure of the collectors was essential. So our strategy put that together and it was clear. Discreetly shadow these members of the organization who left the mansion. We believed that by following their movements, we could discover locations where higher ranking members congregated. We meticulously tracked individuals who appeared to hold the influence within the group. And this involved navigating the streets of Paris, making sure we followed them wherever they were going. And our efforts bore fruit within days as we uncovered more secretive meetings in obscure locations where the collector's leaders convened. This presented, though, an opportunity for me to approach one of them, to engage in a conversation, to maybe shed light on their motives and intentions, and just give me more of an idea of who these people are. As our mission continued, the leader of the organization, a Viktor Drakov, gradually came into focus. He was a man of mystery, undeniable charisma, someone who held the reins of the collectors. The more we learned about him, the more intriguing this guy became. Viktor Drakov was no ordinary figure. His presence was magnetic, drawing members of the organization to him like moths to a flame. And our intel revealed that he frequented certain Parisian haunts, establishments known for attracting individuals with a taste for the occult. It was here that we devised a plan to engineer an encounter with Drakov. I was determined to get up close and personal with this guy, to probe his intentions and assess his character. My strategy was to assume the guise of an avid seeker of arcane knowledge, someone genuinely curious about the secrets of this clandestine world. It was a risky gamut, but it held the promise of engaging with this guy on a personal level, of peering behind the curtain and perhaps extracting valuable insights. Had to be done. On a moonlit evening, we strategically positioned ourselves in one of the establishments known to be frequented by Drakov. I blended seamlessly with the patrons. My demeanor reflected an authentic fascination with the mystical and the obscure. I was prepared to play my part, to be the curious seeker of forbidden truths, all while concealing my true identity. And then, as if the stars aligned, Drakov entered the establishment. His mere presence shifted the whole atmosphere, commanding attention. I seized the moment, striking up conversation with him immediately, my words laden with allusions to the occult and the artifacts that bound us. And to my delight, he offered to sit and chat with me over a steaming cup of coffee. I caught him by surprise, which was the key here. And then, of course, he was standing there. But, you know, he's not comfortable answering all my questions just standing there in front of everyone. So I'm sure that helped me get that sit-down offer. But, hey, I couldn't have asked for a better opportunity to get into this mystery around this guy. In that quiet corner, I found myself engaged in a conversation with Viktor Drakov, the leader of the collectors. He had an aura about him that just sent out a feeling of authority and knowledge, wisdom, his words hinting at a profound understanding of the occult, like he was going to be my hero. He spoke of ancient texts and forbidden rituals, his eyes just gleaming with a hunger for secrets. It became evident that he was a true believer in the power of the artifacts, and I even got him to talk about that mirror. I was there and I was showing interest in what he was saying and I was also trying to get across a little bit of 
naivete around the whole thing. Present myself as someone willing to learn. I mean, I had to dress down and everything for this, or it absolutely wouldn't have worked or been believable, but it was fortunately. And as we got even deeper in our discussion, I was able to very carefully steer him always back to that mirror. Of course, Drakov's responses were measured, revealing just enough to pique my interest. And let's face it, he was obviously being careful because he was out in public, I was asking a lot of questions, and he couldn't absolutely be certain who he was meeting with because I was presenting myself in such a way. But I mean, he did open up a bit, albeit very slowly. He ends up telling me about his beliefs and unveiling hidden realms and concealed truths, hinting at its potential to reshape the world itself. Boom, there it was. In the midst of our exchange, I caught glimpses of his true character. He was a man of contradictions. He was charismatic. He was a leader with an insatiable thirst for power. He was willing to plunge into the darkest depths of the occult to achieve his goals. He made that very clear. As our conversation continued, I couldn't help but wonder about the extent of his knowledge and his role. Was he the mastermind behind all of the sinister plans, or was there even a higher authority lurking in the shadows? It was a question that gnawed at me for sure, urging me to dig deeper. But the encounter with Drakoff did have to come to an end, and it left me with a trove of new questions and a growing sense of unease. Our mission had brought us closer to unraveling the mysteries surrounding the Mystic Mirror and the shadowy organization of the Collectors, but it had also unveiled the complexities of the man at the helm. Drakoff was a puzzle, and I was determined to piece together this mystery that was Victor Drakoff, his involvement with the occult, and what his bigger plans were. What I got out of that meeting was that this man and all that he had going on was a serious matter. It was time to get to that mansion and get our mirror before it was too late. So the next night, after thorough preparation, it was time to act. We recognized that the collectors had intentionally left obvious security measures in place for those who underestimated their defenses. And what I mean by that is they had a lot going on security-wise, as Frankie had uncovered. But for people walking by or even having the thought that they might enter that mansion. They had left obvious security measures in place, but with our expertise, we knew that they were older. They had very much more sophisticated security going on, and it wasn't going to be something you could cut a wire and take care of. In today's world, you know, security measures, they've evolved. And often our approach leans more towards defense in these cases. However, in this mission, our goal was to confront the organization's leaders, so we were going to get in one way or the other. We needed to make it clear that we were aware of their activities and that they needed to cease. Though not an ideal situation, we were going to face whatever security measures awaited us. And so what that means is we can't take care of all our security on the front end. We're going to have to go in and take it as it comes. As we approached the mansion under the cover of darkness, of course, we took up our concealed positions within the landscaping on the edge of the property. From this vantage point, we surveyed this second floor patio. It was adjacent to a room that had caught our attention during earlier observations. This room appeared devoid of furniture. Its walls had dust cloths on them. So it seemed like they were prepping for maybe painting or some kind of renovation but we didn't see any activity in there at that time. So with some confidence, at least, that no one would be occupying this space, we made our way up to that second floor patio, scaling the walls under the moonlight, hoping that no one would see us or sense us for that matter. Frankie works the locks on the windowed doors and we get inside. The room's emptiness confirmed our suspicions. It was a dormant place and here, we had found at least a silent entry point into the heart of the mansion. So we had made it to the inside. This was a moment of opportunity and our mission had officially moved to the inside. Now, after we took a check of ourselves and everything around us, we started to move again, silently making our way out of that room and deeper into the mansion. We end up in this dimly lit corridor 
and we couldn't see the wall art in detail, but it was there, so they had some things up. We're all dressed in black, of course, in our tactical gear, so we're feeling pretty good and hidden. There are a lot of shadows. There's a lot of big art and big things, especially on the second floor that we feel pretty safe. We moved carefully and thoughtfully with precision and silence. I mean, we knew we had seen people go into the mansion. We knew there weren't a ton of people there, but there was a group for sure. Our first mission here was twofold, guys. Okay, first, we have to locate the mirror and secure it. Second, gather valuable intelligence about the collector's plans and their top people. We knew Drakov, but who were the other high ups? We soon come upon this heavy oak door faint murmurs and there was this aroma of cigar smoke emanating from on the door signaling the presence of individuals in that room these are the guys we're looking for it's decided that we're going to investigate further of course so we press our ears against the door and listen carefully to the voices within and it becomes apparent that this was no ordinary gathering these were the high-ranking members of the organization involved in a very secretive discussion Peeling away from the door, I gather the team for a quiet conference, just an ad hoc conference. I mean, what we just found was great, but we weren't exactly ready to find everyone just right there. We needed to devise a plan to eavesdrop on this secretive meeting without raising suspicion. Now, Scarlett, always resourceful, suggests that we use the use of a concealed microphone device that could transmit audio to a different location because, you know, we can't all be huddled around this door. So we get that in place and we go back to our hidden position and the voices are clearer, they're louder, and we start to begin to discern fragments of this conversation. They talked about how the mystic mirror was a requirement for their upcoming ritual, yet they still had things to decipher. They didn't sound very confident in knowing the mirror's true purpose or its full potential. So it's like they wanted to use it, but they knew there was more about it. And it's almost like they wanted to understand it or be able to control it maybe uh, because they they weren't confident in using it just yet. They discussed things as if there was, you know, more that the mirror could do. And they kind of blamed it on their predecessors. Like people should have figured this out before, but hadn't. Now, we couldn't know exactly what they meant by all of this because, as we all know, eavesdropping is not optimum. You never have all of the information. A lot of it is misunderstood. However, it was becoming apparent that the mirror had or held a pivotal role in the Collector's Dark Plans, but the true extent of its powers was still a mystery even to them. We started to notice different levels. You could just tell who was in more control than others. But the very higher up high ups were starting to show themselves. I mean, our mission had taken an unexpected turn, revealing not only the presence of this mystic mirror, but also the existence of a powerful hidden cabal with sinister intentions. It was clear that the mirror was central to their plans, of course, and we were determined to figure this out and stop it. I mean, they were talking about artifacts, and we heard them talking about the Codex of Shadows, which I mentioned earlier. It was also stolen. But they're trying, apparently, to bring these things together. Apparently, this book has some incantations that will supposedly unlock more of the mirror, the mystic mirror's real deal. We have learned that these two things go together to create something even more powerful. Our first goal, though, is to deal with the mirror. But what we're gathering is that there are very big plans around this thing, plans that we just can't let happen. As we descended the winding staircase into the mansion's dimly lit basement, a strong sense of anticipation was hanging in the air for all of us. We knew that we were closing in on the mystic mirror the coveted artifact central to the collector's evil plans. The basement, okay, this was a eerie maze. I mean, lots of little hallways, lots of shelves that were laden with ancient tomes, crates of curiosities and forgotten relics. But our focus remained unswerving as we scanned the surroundings. I mean, you don't know how tempting it was to just go through everything but we had to find the mirror's concealed location. 
With a mixture of both caution and reverence, we eventually did locate it. It was hidden behind a heavy velvet curtain in a recessed alcove. The mirror, an ornate masterpiece, seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, and its surface held a mesmerizing, shifting reflection of our own eager faces. As we approached, our breaths held in anticipation, a strange sensation coursed through us. This mirror wasn't just an object, it was a repository of untold power, a gateway to the unknown. We couldn't resist the urge to touch it, to unlock its secrets. Gently, we began to move the mirror from its resting place, and each touch sent ripples of this crazy energy through the chamber. It was as if the mirror itself acknowledged that we were there, and it was responding to our intent. And then it happened. As we carefully positioned the mirror, a blinding flash of light erupted from its surface, illuminating the basement in this glow. A deafening hum filled the air, and these symbols, they materialized in the mirror's glass, symbols like what was on the frame. Instead, now they swirled and shifted in a mesmerizing dance. We had awakened the mystic mirror, that was for sure, and it held the promise of revelation and danger in equal measure. The mirror's secrets were about to unfurl before our very eyes, but little did we know that our actions had not gone unnoticed. We didn't know it at the time, although we weren't going to be all that surprised. Upstairs in the cigar room, the high-ranking members of the organization had detected the disturbance. Us. They knew someone had breached the basement, and they were now descending the stairs with a sense of urgency, determined to protect their most coveted treasure. Our hearts were racing as we stood before the awakened mirror, ready to face whatever mysteries and perils it held. The showdown in the basement had begun, and it was a confrontation neither side was really fully prepared for, even though we had both prepared, quote-unquote. I mean, sometimes you just can't be all ready. As we stood before this mirror, and its glow bathing the basement in its otherworldly radiance, a sense of trepidation and wonder washed over us. We were on the precipice of uncovering its secrets, but the blinding flash of light and the symbols swirling within the mirror's surface also hinted at the unknown perils that lay ahead. Our attention remained fixed on the mirror, our hands trembling with a mixture of excitement and uncertainty. It was as if the mirror beckoned us to explore its mysteries, to delve into its abyss, the knowledge it contained. But before we could do anything, take another step, a series of hurried footsteps echoed from the staircase leading to the basement. Those high-ranking members of the organization had swiftly responded to the disturbance, their urgency in the air. As they descended, their faces contorted with determination and anger. We realized that the confrontation we had anticipated was now upon us. They had come to protect their treasure, and we were determined to secure it. With the mirror's secrets tantalizingly close, we braced ourselves for the impending clash. The basement, once a haven of hidden knowledge, had transformed into a battleground of wills and power. The face-off was imminent as we gazed into the shimmering surface of the mystic mirror. It captivated my attention in an unexpected manner, but just for a moment. While I couldn't anticipate what lay ahead, there was something about the mirror in that moment that intrigued me right then. It was as if I sensed a hidden depth within its reflective surface, something beyond ordinary. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it was a detail that caught my eye for sure, and I couldn't ignore the feeling that there was more to the mirror than we could know right then. Maybe something was about to happen. I couldn't exactly deal with it in that moment, but I did hold the thought. And right in those few seconds, the basement's dimly lit confines became the backdrop for a confrontation that would test our metal, ready or not. As those high-ranking members of the collectors descended into the basement, their presence filled the chamber with an air of tension and foreboding. We stood our ground before the awakened mirror, ready for the inevitable confrontation. Drakov stepped forward, his eyes locking onto the mirror, and a malevolent grin crept across his face. It was clear that he considered the mirror to be his prize, and he would stop at nothing to claim it. But as the confrontation loomed, something extraordinary began to unfold. The mystic mirror, pulsing with this energy, 
seemed to awaken even more as if responding to Drakov. Symbols etched across its surface began to shift and rearrange, forming a complex pattern that none of us could comprehend. A low, resonant hum filled the air, and the basement seemed to vibrate with some kind of crazy energy or power. You could feel it in your body. In that moment, it became apparent that the mystic mirror held a will of its own, a consciousness that transcended our own understanding. This was not merely an object. It was a sentient entity, and it had taken notice of the clash of wills unfolding before it. It was reacting to all of us. Without warning, the mirror's surface rippled, and a series of images flashed before our eyes. We saw glimpses of ancient rituals, long-forgotten incantations, and the faces of those who had sought to harness its power throughout the ages. Then, as if guided by an unseen force, the mirror unleashed a spectacle that transcended mere visions. It projected an overwhelming force that sent shockwaves through the basement, a display of its boundless power. I mean, we were all forcibly pushed back by this force, pushed back against the walls, rendered immobile by the sheer might of the mirror. In this mesmerizing display, the mirror unveiled a harrowing tableau, a vivid and visceral portrayal of the catastrophic consequences that would unfold if either side were to claim it. Destruction engulfed the scene, chaos reigned supreme, and the suffering of countless souls played out in agonizing detail. Don't need to go into all that for you guys. It was brutal. It was as if the mirror had assumed the role of a sentient guardian, determined to reveal the dire repercussions of wielding its power. The confrontation once deemed inevitable now is teetering on a precipice of uncertainty. Even the high-ranking members of the collectors were hesitating in the face of this awe-inspiring revelation. And, I mean, we too were left in a state of profound awe as the mirror took charge of the room, making decisions of its own. It had chosen to defy being utilized as a mere tool for destruction, instead embracing the role of safeguarding its hidden knowledge and power. The basement had been transformed into an arena of conflicting intentions, not solely between the collectors and us, but also between the mirror and anyone who sought dominion over it. The outcome hung in the balance, and the mirror's role in determining our fate had just begun. The leader of the organization and his evil demeanor was now replaced by astonishment and frustration. He extended a hand toward the mirror, attempting to assert his own dominance, yet the mirror resisted with unyielding determination. Its surface just shimmered in defiance. In response, the mirror projected even more profound images, visions of heroes and saviors who had thwarted the ambitions of power-hungry individuals throughout history. It was a stark reminder that the mirror had borne witness to countless struggles and would not easily submit to the whims of just any mortal. Our team and the high-ranking members, and I mean, we found ourselves, all of us, ensnared in the mirror's overwhelming display, unable to move. We were being held captive by the mirror against the wall. The basement had transformed into a theater of cosmic proportions, and we were all unwitting participants in a clash that would determine the fate of worlds. Now, we, the team and I, we stood resolute that the mystic mirror had chosen to reveal its true nature and protect its own knowledge, and we were aligned with its purpose. But the team of collectors, now that was a different story. With a surge of mystic energy that shook the entire room, the mirror acted decisively. It emitted a blinding burst of light that enveloped one of the guys from the collectors. This guy's anguished cries filled the chamber for a while as the brilliance seemed to almost cleanse his evil intentions. In that radiant display, the mirror extracted the knowledge this guy so ruthlessly sought, the secrets of its power, the incantations, and the rituals, it left this guy with a profound understanding of the mirror's purpose. 
which was to safeguard forbidden knowledge and prevent it from being used for destruction. Purpose to safeguard forbidden knowledge, prevent it from being used for its destruction. That's what it was protecting. This guy was now humbled and transformed and he stumbled back. His insatiable thirst for power had been replaced by a newfound reverence for the mirror's evil wisdom. I mean, things got really intense in that moment, but then they completely settled down again. Like there had been some sort of agreement or, you know, now that it had shown us. But in our eyes, I mean, sure, we can realize its powers, but it was almost like something had happened that we had missed. I mean, what was going on in that moment? Remember, when I saw the mirror do something that I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but I noticed it, well, I was having that same sense and that same feeling again. And I looked at my team and I mean, they're nodding because they know something is going on here. They knew something was different, but what was up? In the aftermath of this basement confrontation, as we stood in the basement of that mansion, we could sense a lingering unease in the air. Of course, the high-ranking members of the collectors were left in disarray. Their once solid convictions were shattered by the mystic mirror's intervention. But as the dust settled and it seemed as though the mirror was calming down, its surface returning to its tranquil state, and we began to believe that the confrontation had come to an end. However, just when we thought the ordeal was over, an unexpected occurrence unfolded. The mystic mirror still shimmering with the remnants of its revelations revealed another facet of its enigmatic nature. Mr. Drakoff found himself drawn to the mirror. His steps were hesitant at first, but an irresistible force seemed to be pulling him closer, and we just watched in astonishment as he ended up standing right there in front of the mirror, his reflection casting within its gleaming surface. It was then that we realized the mirror for sure had those two sides, a duality of good and evil, of light and darkness. Mr. Drakoff, his eyes filled with ambition and a thirst for power, faced a profound choice. The mirror projected a vision of unparalleled grandeur, a devilish figure shrouded in darkness and offering untold power. It promised Mr. Drakoff dominion over the occult and access to knowledge beyond human comprehension. The allure of such power was undeniable. But there was another side, a glimmer of light within the mirror's depths. It showed Mr. Drakoff the path of goodness, the choice to use his knowledge for the betterment of humanity, a chance to renounce his malevolent ambitions and embrace a nobler purpose. The basement, once a battlefield of wills, was now the stage for a battle within one man's soul. We watched in suspense as Mr. Drakoff grappled with his decision, torn between the darkness and light. In the end, it was his insatiable thirst for power that prevailed, unfortunately. And with a determined gaze, he reached out toward the devilish figure within the mirror, sealing his pact with the forces of darkness. A surge of malevolent energy erupted from the mystic mirror like a dark storm unleashed. The room quaked, the air crackled with sinister electricity, casting eerie, shifting shadows across the walls. As Mr. Drakoff's hand inched closer to the devilish figure within the mirror, the mirror itself seemed to come alive with wicked intent. Fiery tendrils of dark energy snaked out, reaching toward him with a hypnotic, mesmerizing allure. In that moment, time lost all meaning. The world outside ceased to exist and the basement became a stage for a cosmic battle of wills. The air grew heavy with the weight of this unholy decision. With a final agonizing inch, their hands met, a collision of darkness and temptation that sent shockwaves through the very foundations of the mansion. The devil's triumphant grin lit up the room, its eyes gleaming with pure evil. The mystic mirror's malevolent energy surged, creating a tempest of shadows that twisted and writhed like an ethereal serpent. It was a breathtaking display of otherworldly power, a spectacle that etched the consequences 
of Mr. Drakoff's choice into the very essence of the room. Now, as this tempest gradually subsided, leaving an ominous stillness in its wake, the mansion itself seemed to bear witness to this unholy act. The mystic mirror had unleashed its full cinematic effects, and the fate of Mr. Drakoff was sealed in darkness. With an eerie hush that followed, the basement plunged into silence. It was in this unsettling calm that the absolutely unthinkable occurred. As if the very air itself had turned treacherous, Mr. Drakoff was drawn even closer to the mirror. And in a surreal spectacle, the mirror's surface rippled with a malevolent energy forming a dark, swirling vortex. It became a gateway to an unfathomable abyss. And Mr. Drakoff found himself irresistibly pulled into its depths, right before our eyes. His screams echoed through the room, but they were drowned out by the eldritch forces at play. His form contorted and twisted as he was pulled into the mirror like a moth drawn to a flame. The room itself seemed to shudder as the mirror devoured Mr. Drakoff, basically, its surface returning to this calm once again. In an instant, this guy was just gone. His fate sealed within the dark confines of this mystic mirror a prisoner of the very power he sought to harness. I mean, we just stood there. We were in a stunned silence, witnessing the chilling spectacle that had unfolded before our eyes. Mr. Drakoff had paid a harrowing price for his ambitions, becoming a captive of the mirror's malevolent depths, captive to the devil himself. With this dramatic display, the mirror had asserted its dominance and safeguarded its secrets, leaving all who had borne witness to the confrontation to grapple with the profound implications of its newfound consciousness. And with that, its work was done. Anything glowing, anything steaming, anything happening at all just stopped. The high-ranking members of the collectors, they were also stunned and in disbelief. Their evil leader, Mr. Drakoff, he was just gone, absorbed by the mirror he sought to control. The mirror, once a source of their ambition, was now a silent sentinel. I knew that it was time to complete our mission, our part in all of this, and depart from this mansion. The collectors, now bereft of their leader and the mirror's power, had no choice but to yield to my demands, because they were demands at this point. With unwavering determination, I made it clear that the mirror would be accompanying me, destined for its rightful place within the hallowed halls of the museum. And as I left the mansion, the mystic mirror in my possession, I couldn't help but reflect on the surreal and unsettling events that had just transpired. The mirror had proven to be a force absolutely beyond our understanding, a guardian of forbidden knowledge, and a formidable enigma. As I arrive at the museum, with the mirror in tow, of course, I was met by Veronica and her team of handlers, each one carefully trained to handle the supernatural artifacts that often come their way. We all exchanged knowing glances, understanding the significance of this moment. The mirror, once a source of peril and chaos, was now safely in the hands of those who would ensure its responsible containment. It was a small victory in the ongoing battle against the forces of darkness that lurk in the shadows of our world. But as we stood there, the weight of this mission and the awareness of the many other powerful artifacts and evil individuals out there, still at large, pressed upon us. The world, it's a vast and mysterious place. It's filled with enigmas and dangers beyond most people's imagination. I mean, our work is never done. It never ends, guys. And the jobs ahead would undoubtedly bring new challenges and revelations around all of this, as they always do. I handed over that mystic mirror to Veronica and her team. It was a symbol of our collective commitment to safeguarding the supernatural world from those who sought and seek to exploit its secrets. As the mirror found its place within the museum's secure archives, I couldn't help but think again about 
the endless journey that is ahead of all of us, a relentless pursuit of knowledge, a battle against the unknown, and a determination to protect the world from the forces of darkness, one artifact and issue at a time. And that was this job, guys. Putting this mirror back in its place, I guess on a few levels, right? Things like this just can't be out because there are too many people that will take it to places we just can't have here on earth. I hope you enjoyed listening today. This story, of course, is just a small piece of everything. I have more jobs, more stories to share. So check back and thank you for listening today. I appreciate you taking the time to be here with me. Until next time, guys, and I will talk to you all soon.